Thanks for tuning in. I'm Cody Harvey with Up to Code. Today we're going to talk about EFA stucco. I'll give you a little background information, but mostly I want to just show you the detail work that goes along with the EFA stucco system. So quick background on EFA stucco. Some guys you might refer to it as acrylic stucco. And back in the day, what they used to do is they used to just put Tyvek or your house wrap on the building and then they would screw foam such as this. They would screw it on with uh, little wind devils. It's like a plastic, giant plastic washer and they'd screw it in. And then they would do the acrylic stucco system. But that's had some major failures. It's, uh, it's just wasn't a well thought out system. It, it's just caused way too many rot problems and issues, especially big apartment buildings, anything over two or three stories, just a mess, okay? So the reason we're talking about EFIS is because that this is the proper way to do it and it's the wave of the future and it is an awesome system. So EFIS is exterior insulated finishing system. What I have here, or actually this is my folks place, we're doing three inch foam. No mechanical fasteners, that's the point of EFIS. And then this foam actually has the drainage plane and that's the whole idea behind it is this stuff, this is called gold coat. That's what Stow, the Stow system calls it, gold coat trowel on or, or gold coat TA, but it's a fluid applied membrane. And a lot of buildings are going this way. So we messed all the joints and we just did that to seal the house for now. Then when the, we're actually going to get the stuck ores to do it because we don't have time, but they're going to gold coat the whole entire building, right? Uh, we've done all the detail work and that's what we want to show you today. Then what they do is after it's gold coated, that's your air barrier, but it's also your drainage plane. They've sealed off this drip cap. Then they'll actually, when they gold coat all of it and with the drainage plane, when they actually mortar, so the mortar and bond the foam to the wall, and then if water drives in through the windows, it just runs in behind the stucco along this surface and, and can easily get out. There's no hydrostatic pressure that forces or pushes it in, in, into the house or into the building, doesn't matter if it's commercial or not. The windows are installed like this, which seems a little goofy, but this gets meshed and gold coated all the way around. There's no lapping like you would if you're using paper products. And then it's just, this is totally sealed in. It's one membrane, right? And then the water can do whatever it wants. It just runs down and off. It's a great system, adds our value, looks amazing. So let's get into the details. If you zoom in here, first thing I, I was planning is just planning my parging height, my deck ledgers, doing all the drip caps. So here, what I did is I just plopped on this drip cap. It's three and a quarter dimension this way, just a hair past the face of the stucco and then the drip here. So I put this on so I could get the height of my deck ledger. Now, what most guys do is they don't factor in the angle of the drip, the six degree angle and this little lip. So if you're using an inch and a half deck boards, they base the inch and a half off of this inside corner. But then what happens is this ends up sitting backwards and not working properly. So I have, you'll see throughout the video, I have basically notes for all the guys working on the house. And uh, so what I did is I took my square <clears throat> and I set the height. So this is square to the front of here. Then I measured an inch and a half. Then I measured my nine and a quarter for a two by 10 ledger. And that's, that's how we determine this height. The deck ledger is based off the bottom of the door sills, okay? Now this door is a little goofy because back in the day, this house actually had two inch SM foam and then cedar siding. And then I replaced this door and it ended up being a two by six and I furred it out. This is the gap that I need, but I wanna be an inch and a half here so I don't crank that drip cap all the way up. Over here is a good example. What we did, and I'll kind of fill you in, 
We actually, this is actually a wood basement. And it, over the years, it's actually held up really well. But because I'm doing three inch foam, I didn't want this to look goofy and have the parging way back three inches. So we just strapped it out with two by four, did a row of treated plywood, brought it out. And then, so that way the parging's close to the actual finished stucco and it just looks better in the end. But what we did is we gold coated and meshed in behind all this deck ledger. Then we put this drip cap on and then we meshed and gold coated that. And the reason we do that is because if water somehow gets in here, because a lot of times your, your deck over the winter will build up with snow and it'll wick water in here. We want that to be able to drain down and out of this drip cap right here. And we also kerf cut the back side of both of these deck ledgers. So it's just a, we set the skill saw to 3 16 deep and we just did a bunch of saw cuts. And that way it would just allow water and reduce that hydrostatic pressure. We're not forcing water in the house and it can drain out of here. If we didn't gold coat this drip cap, it would just trickle in behind all this build out that I did and just totally F my day. The other thing I made sure the guys knew, do not put screws in the same position as the kerf cut. We want to avoid those. So the screws, the water is going to basically want to follow the path of least resistant and go beyond, beside the screws. So we just want to limit water infiltration. Then we put this drip cap on. We just sealed this earlier today and then they'll gold coat over that again. So over here, we've made provisions for future mechanical. So this is a hose bib or a spigot or an outside tap. That's just a hole. But we want to do smart trim. We're going to color or paint this the same color as the stucco. So it all just blends. You don't really notice this. We treated this the same way as a deck ledger. And then I made it a little bit wider just in case we have future penetrations. If we do like a high efficiency furnace or anything like that, we just have a little extra room. And what's nice about this is you can actually screw something solid. You're not screwing through whether it's inch and a half, two inch or three inch EFA stucco, you're not screwing it with a little dangly screw into the plywood, right? It's just nice and solid. Same thing here, gold coat and mesh behind, installed this drip cap, meshed and gold coated it again, kerf cut the backside of these treated two by tens or two by six. That way water can infiltrate in, in beside, run out of this drip cap here installed this drip cap and sealed it. We'll show you a few other locations as well. Here's another detail location. This is the kitchen range hood. So just exhaust straight out. Again, drip cap, gold coated, drip cap, gold coated, but we also gold coated all the inside corners. Cause how do you prevent water from like, once the smart trim's on, how do you prevent it from just shooting straight into the house? You have to gold coat and mesh that. Then what I've done, as you can see, this is the backside, all my kerf cuts. And then I made marks on the outside as to not screw through my kerf cut. And it's all down to the details, right? Because if you forget all this stuff, it doesn't matter how well the stucco looks. It doesn't matter if you gold coated most of it your building's not protected. You always need to make provisions to get water back out. So water gets in, it needs to come back out. Here's the, here's the big mother detail that we did. And this is hot and cold water spigot. We have exhaust for the washroom downstairs. We have the dryer. And this side of the house is where we'll have intakes and exhaust for future uh, direct vent hot water tank and high efficient furnace that all gets vented through the sidewall. Same detail. You can see more notes on the walls. For me, I love the EFA stucco system, especially on wood frame buildings, commercial buildings, things like that. But I do believe it's all in the details. You have to think about everything. You have to think about where's the water gonna get in, how's it gonna go sideways, and you just wanna prevent that from happening, reduce water infiltration, and just make sure that you pay attention to the details. Thanks for tuning in.